It's Q4 of 22. Should I be waiting till 2023 to buy a home? We're gonna talk about what the data shows next. Hey there, this is Ryan Skeggs and this is the Mortgage Minute. Thank you so much for tuning in. This channel is dedicated to everything mortgage, real estate, and interest rates. And we're gonna start with those interest rates. After hitting a recent kind of decade, 10 year high, uh, just last week at 6.7, we're down to 6.66. So, um, you know, have we peaked? Time will tell. But what we wanna cover today is the overall market update. If you have questions, I'm gonna, put uh, some links below to that average 30-year fixed I just quoted according to Freddie Mac. I'm also going to put a, a link to my flip book or my uh, market update here for Q4 as well. So please go, go down there, check those out. They're in the description. While you're down there, hit that like button, hit that subscribe, and click that bell icon to be notified as I'm putting out weekly videos on the channel. Now, I'm going to put up on the screen here some just different ideas or concepts or data points and kind of my hypothesis of what I think. So first and foremost, looking at rates over the last 10 years, yes, we are up, absolutely no doubt whatsoever. Now looking at rates over the last 30 years and overall where we might be, likely we're gonna see a much more equitable, much more, uh, actually we're below the average when you look at it from not just a 10 year, but a 20 year or 30 year uh, outlook. So over a lifetime, over a multiple decade, we actually are in really good shape. So um, next of which is household creations, is we're continuing to add new households at a pretty darn good pace. And we have super low inventory. So check out this chart here, and kind of shows you we're down to that 1.3 million of inventory. You likely heard if you've been in the market or thinking about buying or selling is that inventory has been super low, lots of buyers out there. Well, going into this fourth quarter, especially in the Chicagoland market, we typically have a little less buyers, but we also have pretty darn low inventory. Now, one of the things that uh, I get clients that'll ask me and just say, you know, what about a recession? You know, what happens with rates? What happens with prices? I'm a little scared to proceed. Completely understand the headlines are super scary out there. But one thing, and again, this is just what history has shown us, is that home prices increase during recessions, not decrease. That's the last eight of nine recessions here. And you can check out in those little dark bars there. Those are the recessions. And you can see home prices increasing, not decreasing. Now, we all know that one exception over in 08, 09, um, when we saw the Great Recession of when we actually saw housing prices decrease, but for a completely different reason than a typical quote unquote recession. Next of which is inflation looking at has inflation peaked if it has we're likely going to see the fed slow down on raising interest rates and then we're likely going to see a slowdown on that 30-year fixed as well uh so you know are we there yet the chart shows that we are, but we time will tell. Uh, we've got more data coming out. This is early October. We've got more data coming out um, here in the next about 10 days or so that'll look back on September and really tell us if we, if we have peaked and we're starting to see that trend lower. Um, and, and next of which is what happens with rates if we potentially go into recession, right? So if Q4 people are gearing up for this bad market and potential recession, well, what happens with rates? If you're gonna see here, you're gonna see that rates decrease during a recession, not increase. So typically we're gonna see low inventory on homes, more households looking to buy and potentially lower rates. So uh, the last thing that I really wanna talk about, and, and I've done a video and I'll, I'll post it up here to the link before or to the link above. Uh, and I, again, I, I've spoken about this is you marry the house and you date the rate. You know, the chances of you having this mortgage that you originate today or close tomorrow, whatever it may be for the next 30 years is very, very slim. Likely you're gonna go through a refinance process at some point during your ownership period, especially if you're gonna hold this home for more than five years. If you think you're gonna buy a home now because housing prices um, you know, have dipped a little bit in your area and then you're gonna sell it next year, probably not a great time, right? You know, if you're gonna look for a home that is a five-year plan, a 10-year plan, a 15, 20, you know, whatever it may be, then likely, and, and again, the data shows us that is now a good time to buy? I'll leave it up to you. Put your comments below. 
I at least gave you the information so you can make an informed decision. So we'd love to hear what you have to say. My name is Ryan Skaggs with The Mortgage Minute. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you've made it this far, click that subscribe button, click that bell icon as I'm putting out weekly videos on the channel. So stay safe and we'll see each other again very, very soon.